Hi everybody, Kate here at Second Verse Paper Studio. I hope you've all had a wonderful junk journal January. I know I have had quite the adventure this month. Um, I just finished up the day 30 prompt, which was unexpected, and I unexpectedly ran out of pages. So I thought for day 31, since the prompt is closed, it would be a good chance to do uh, flip through a bit of reflecting and let you see some of these interactive um, elements in my journal in real time. So let's get into it. Everything I did for research going into this said to keep your journal small and manageable um, since you're going to be doing something every day. You don't want to get overwhelmed. So I opted to use some little invitation envelopes to build my infinity journal. These are about four and a half by five and a half inches. And the nice thing is they're double thickness. So once you get them all glued together, you've got nice sturdy spines and nice sturdy covers. Um, for the cover, I went ahead and used a Cecily Barker flower fairy image. Um, I think it's from the 1920s, if I'm remembering correctly, and I use that for my color inspiration as well. Lots of browns and greens in this journal, a um, few hits of blue, and I had just got some new gilding wax to try out right before the challenge started. So you'll see some hits of gold in there too, which is not terribly typical of my work. Day one was resolution and you can't start a January challenge without it. So I kind of tried to stay pretty general um, with this one. I played with my gilding wax and had a lot of fun with that, made a little journaling card. Day two was starry and Unfortunately, I didn't look ahead at the prompts before I designed my journal and picked my color palette. So when my brain immediately went, Starry Night Van Gogh, I realized I had to do it in green. So this is Starry Night by way of, I don't know, like a meadow or a garden, something like that. I'm from the Great Plains, and in the summertime, you'll get ripples of grass like the ocean um, waves in the wind. So... I had a lot of fun kind of creating that sense of movement in here and using the sunflowers instead of stars. Day three was stained. Used a bit of placemat. I did some inking on. A scrap of my eco dyed paper to make another little journaling card. I love this stuff so much because it looks like fossils in real life. A little Tim Holtz tag and a little dictionary snippet about the stuff that's left over after you erase text. There's also a bit of um, stained tissue paper in there, separating it from day four, which was the decorated tag. Saw the little singing frog and couldn't resist. We have routine. I kept this spread pretty simple after the previous couple that got kind of busy. We have stitched. I had a lot of fun creating my little um, fairy mannequin here. And then I found this in my stash. It's a bit of packaging from some of the lace I have. And it says, Rights Carefree Ruffling. We certainly wouldn't want to worry about our ruffles, would we? We have Shimmer, another pretty simple spread, but I got to break out all of the shiny papers. These are actually from Dollar Tree. Their scrap packs have some phenomenal papers in them. And I've got another little journaling card in here. This one opens up and a bit of washi tape on there. And we have Blossom for day eight. And I used some of my origami flower pockets. I've got a little fabric pansy in this one. A 
vintage ticket stub in this one. And then in the big pocket, I've got a die cut from more of my eco dyed paper. And I learned how to make open work lace this month. And I thought that turned out pretty nice. Tuck those back in. And we had hidden. And I struggled with this one, especially after going all out with the previous page and hiding goodies under those flowers. So I opted to go for camouflage, and I have a camouflaged journaling card. Then we had intricate for day 10, and I chose to do a mixed media wren's nest. We actually have people who will put scraps of fabric and cotton and recycled denim into um, suet feeders, wire suet feeders, for the wrens around here to build their nests. So that was inspired by the little wrens around here. Then we have pocket. I did a simple corner tuck over here with an altered playing card and a tri-fold journaling card. Just a little collage cluster on there. And then on this side, I did another little flower pocket. This one much smaller. And I've got just a little button tag in there. Just something cute, a little treasure to find. After that, we did throwback. I chose to go for um, elementary school vibes. Still in the greens, but I've got Holly Hobby hanging out here, the writing road those paper chain people that we always saw on TV, but I somehow never learned how to make that in elementary school. The next day was hobbies, and I was pretty tickled when I realized I had a half page here, so Holly Hobby could look out on both pages. I've got references to my writing and reading. I read a lot of fantasy. Um, I crochet, so I've got a little crochet dragonfly there, and I cook a lot, so I've actually got just a pasta salad recipe from my brother's graduation in there. This one was from the day and it was a busy day. Um, hit up Barnes and Noble, went grocery shopping. I actually had a flock of blackbirds blocking the road on my way into town that day. And I knew I had this little image from an old book, so I threw that in there as well. And we had barcode, and this was another page I struggled with because barcodes really didn't fit the whole nature magic vibe I had going. But I found these little fabric flowers, and this is the barcode from an old library book called Drawing from Nature. So I made a little bouquet of textile flowers and found an image that kind of matched and put them together. Then we have folded. And this one is the most beautiful vintage stationery that I found in Salvation Army. And it just folds out into a great big journaling spot. And then I also put in some little journaling cards with Victorian seed packet images on the front. And now for my favorite part of an Infinity Junk Journal. We get to the back cover and we're just going to slide it over and keep on going. The signatures in this are bound in both directions. That way we don't get quite such a gator mouth out of it and um, it's just a lot of fun to get to that last page and know there's more. So, on to day 17. This was top five. And I did the Beatles on a dare. I received a bug book from my mother who teaches science. And 
it was time for bugs. So I picked my favorites out of there and added a little collage on the other page here. Then we have maps. It says little by little, one travels far. And I have a vintage airmail envelope in there as well. Then we have hand lettered. I put a quote from Yates in here. It says, the world is full of magic things patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. And at that point in the month, I kind of adopted that as my mantra for the whole project. Take ordinary, everyday stuff and make it somehow magical. I've got a reproduction of a postcard in here with a pressed flower printed on. I have some pressed flowers of my own that I made this summer. There we go, without the glare. I don't remember what kind these are. I went around this fall before everything faded and picked a little of everything. But I made a cute little specimen card out of a manila folder. And then this is an image from a swamp guidebook, like a big coffee table book from the um, 80s, I believe. And I just like the colors in there. So this just clips on. Then we have texture. The back side of that swamp page and some lace, some tissue paper, more of that Dollar Tree, highly textured sparkly paper, um, the paper bag, which happened to be my page base. And then in here, I have another one of my um, eco dyed paper sheets and I turned the whole page into a great big pocket and some fun eyelash yarn for more texture. We have experimental and really I'm debating I've been going back and forth about getting a jelly plate and not sure if I'm gonna really use it that kind of thing so, for the experimental day, I did a little DIY version just to see what kinds of things um, it might be capable of and whether or not I like the idea. This was made, these two paid pieces of green were made using um, a Ziploc bag <laughs> with a little hair gel in it um, to give a little more texture. And I just painted right on there. and then pressed it onto these pages. First attempt was just some acrylics and then my second attempt I went ahead and inked up afterward and I had this pretty embossed birdcage paper and so when I got done painting I just rubbed off the ink on the embossing and it stayed nice and bright and shiny. And Then I have a little poem in here I'll let you read that if you're interested. And some more fairy pictures. The next page was old and new. I have some vintage mushroom illustrations, a stamp, and then I have um, a page from a Minnesota Conservation Volunteer magazine all about Minnesota mushrooms. So, got a little journaling space over here. Nice vibrant picture with the muted colors over here. Really like this spread a lot. The next day was stickers. I believe that's day 23. Brought out all the shiny ones again. And I had some fun there. Lots of writing space on this page. Then we have scenery. And I have got another swamp page in here with a little cluster on it. And um, the frog, the barking tree frog, came out of that book too. A little lace snippet. And then this page folds out to a beautiful shot of the swamp itself. I believe this is the Okefenoki Swamp. Somewhere in the deep south. I don't remember exactly where. The book is has long been in pieces. But beautiful colors. 
Which brings me to the one color page. And by the luck of the draw, my one color was brown. But I like the muted spread. I've got a little nests and eggs, a familiar birds journaling card, and a belly band made out of some scraps. A little postcard page, some mushrooms. Just a nice break from all the bright colors. This one is Wordy, another poem, and some snippets from the bug book. It says, and every time I climb a tree, where have you been, they say to me, but don't they know that I am free every time I climb a tree? And I had a little fairy picture that went with it. And somehow I managed, this was only a half page, and when I went to put this cluster on, I put my glue too high. So I had to slap a page on the back and it ended up being perfect for the next spread, which was earth tones. So I've got some lovely earth tone insects, um, another one of those vintage stationary pages where they're harvesting some wheat. And I wanted the twine over here to kind of echo the bundles of wheat on this side. And with the little sparkles in there, I thought maybe they're stirring up fairies instead of bugs. So I've got a little fairy in here as well. This page is day 28, and the theme was antique. And this is another one I struggled with. Um, I'd gotten a little ahead, and I lost my lead on this one. Because I do so much that is vintage or borderline antique. Um, some of the book pages in here are from the 1800s, just a crumbling old book I'd found. But I decided to go with a Victorian garden theme for my antique page. I've got a sketch of a conservatory and a little bit of a blurb from the book. And then I have a fold out floral illustration with writing space on the back. Next page is musical, and I've got some sheet music in the background here, a little sentiment here. It says, and then I heard the forest sing. And this little grasshopper is from an Aesop's Fables book, another frog from the swamp book, and the lily pad is from the swamp book. And then I took and cut a little ballerina out of a museum guide I had laying around. Then we come to Unexpected, and this is a double spread. Um, I'd like to thank Louisa Heinzel for um, sharing the camera freebie and her video, which I will link in the description box below. Um, I don't remember which day of the challenge she created it for, but I saw it and just fell in love with the whole idea. It's so beautiful. So what I did was create just a general collage on this page, but then there's a little lace tab here, and you can pull out the photo with the butterfly to reveal a butterfly fairy. And when you get over to the next page, this just tucks into the lace here, and it says, look for magic in all the usual places. And you just might find out they're not so usual after all. And that is the final page of my junk journal, January. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did and maybe can get some ideas from my spreads. I know that's where this book is destined for me. I am um, going to keep this handy as a little inspiration book in case I ever get stuck. I can look back and remember all these things that I can do especially new skills I learned, new combinations. I don't think I've ever used quite this shade of acid green in a journal before. I've certainly not done near as much with the textiles and threads and things as I did this month. So that was a lot of fun. And I really, really got past my fear of things being imperfect. There were some pages I just started 
sticking things down and that was so liberating and it felt so so good so I'm looking forward to, forward to seeing all of your videos like and subscribe if you want to see more um, and feel free to follow me on tumblr secondverse paper at tumblr.com thanks <laughs>